JFT just fair and direct. Good morning everyone and welcome to JFD's daily market review for October the 1st. I am Haralambos Pissuros, Head of Research here at JFD and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few, I will leave you a few seconds to read the rest, and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the US dollar pulled back against all but one of the other major currencies on Thursday and during the Asian session Friday. It gained only versus uh, the euro while, while it slid the most against the Japanese yen. Now, the performance in the FX world does not paint a clear picture with regards, um, uh, with regards to the broader market sentiment uh, this time around. So, the strengthening of the yen suggests that uh, markets may have traded in a risk of uh, manner, but the retreat of the US dollar points otherwise. So, in order to clear to clear things up, we prefer to turn our gaze to the equity world. Here we see that major EU and US indices closed in negative territory, with risk aversion rolling into the Asian session today. Both Japan's Nikkei 225 and South Korea's KOSPI slid 2.32 and 1.60% respectively. Uh, while China's uh, Shanghai Composite and Hong Kong Hang Seng uh, remained closed uh, today. In our view, despite the pullback in the US dollar, the performance in the equity world suggests that market participants remain uh, concerned in and uh, remain concerned and in, in the absence of uh, major developments yesterday, the reasons remain the same as uh, the last uh, few days. And those are persistently high inflation, the deadlock in US Congress over the debt ceiling, and fears of ever, of ever granted defaulting after it missed a second offshore bond payment. So why did the dollar retreat? Uh, market chatter suggests uh, that uh, this may have been due to initial jobless claims rising by more than anticipated last week, but this would have proved um, uh, proved positive for equities, at least uh, the US ones, as it could mean that the labor market is not at the, at the, at the desired state, which may be a reason for delaying uh, the beginning of quantitative easing tapering. In our view, uh, the dollar may have pulled back due to some profit taking after its latest steep rally. Perhaps some market participants decided to lock some profits in the end of the month and reevaluate whether to jump to jump back into the action at a, at a later stage. So we believe that even if the retreat continues for a while more, the fundamental background remains the same and thus we would expect the greenback to rebound and continue trending north uh, for a while more. Now as uh, for today, the most important piece of data on the agenda is uh, Eurozone C Eurozone's preliminary CPIs for September. The headline CPI rate is expected to have risen to 3.3% year over year from 3%, while the HI CP excluding energy and food one is anticipated to have inched up to 1.9% year over year from 1.6%. Despite the headline rate moving further above the further above the ECB's objective of 2%, underlying inflation is expected to stay below the target, something that may allow the ECB to stay accommodative for longer than other central banks. Remember that at uh, their latest meeting, officials of uh, this bank announced a moderately lower pace in its uh, pandemic emergency purchase program purchases, but made it clear that this is not a tapering move and that when PEP is, uh, when that when PEP is over, they have all other tools um, available. Thus, we expect the euro to stay underselling interest, especially against the, dollar, against the dollar, given that the Fed is anticipated to start scaling back uh, quantitative easing in November and perhaps start raising interest rates uh, next year. 
Now, as uh, for the rest of today's events, besides uh, the Eurozone CPI's late, uh, besides excuse me, besides the Eurozone CPI's later in the day, from the US we have the personal income and spending numbers for August, as well as the core PCE index for the month. The, IS, the IESM manufacturing index for September is also on the agenda, and the forecast points to a small decline to 59.5 from 59.9. From Canada, we get the monthly GDP for July. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. For those who are interested in learning about the main events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the Weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm holding every Monday at 7 o'clock a.m. GMT. So goodbye, have a great day, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again uh, uh, next week. JFT, just fair and direct.